I'm looking at me kind of funny and just hold it to him. Good evening and welcome to the January 9th, 2019 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rudy Cannon. Here. Ed Blake. Here. Melinda Torrance. I'm not sure who was. Leroy Crockett. Here. <coughs> and as Mr. Longstaff pointed out, we only have four board members. And even if the other one shows up, we'll still only have four. And so what that means is when we have four board members, when we vote, if we tie, that is a denial. So you need to think about that is if you want to proceed tonight knowing that if we vote and it's a tie, that you're appeal will be denied and you can choose to table it if you choose so I believe you can I think that's fine um, so first we're going to do the approval of the minutes from the December 12 2018 meeting did all of the board members have an opportunity to review them did anyone have anything add to add or any corrections or anything like that I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 12 2018 as printed second I move to second uh, all in favor and then we're going to approve the draft written decision for the appeal that we heard on December 12, 2018, appeal number 2654. Again, did the board members have an opportunity to review the draft decision, finding the facts and conclusions of law? Yes? Yeah. I make a motion to approve. Uh, second. Um, all in favor? So we're going to get into the first appeal, which is appeal number 2654, which is a practical difficulty appeal by the Gyrons, Garons, which, um, there we go. Oh, should we do the clock? <laughs> should we do the clock? Would you like to step down now? <laughs> oh. Do you want me to stick around so it's not We made him sick because you weren't here. Yeah. Oh, thank Well, that yeah. was nice. If, if he sticks around, then we don't have it. The, the tie possible. It's up to you. I don't care. Okay. He's here. Good. <laughs> Do you have Melinda's name on hand? We can't share it for That was good. Thank you. Sorry for the All right. Four. Okay. Sorry for the right. interruption. Oh, uh, where is the applicant? Okay. They're there. Um, Dolce or Eddie, whoever is going this? to speak, you if you would take the microphone, uh, no. you can just stand up there. You don't have to have visuals. All right, I'm going to ask that Mr. Longstaff introduce this appeal and kind of give us a little bit of background first. So if the board recalls, this was a... Uh, Originally, a limited reduction of yard size variance appeal. Um, unfortunately, the project as planned didn't meet the criteria for um, just the 10 foot reduction, maximum reduction in, in front yard uh, because of the depth of the, the porch. So um, we asked um, the applicants if they would like to table and come back with a practical difficulty variance, which didn't place that same limitation on the front yard setback. And so they took a, a, a couple of months to get their plans in order and get the um, application filled out. And so you now have before you a practical difficulty variance with basically the same eight foot by 36 foot uh, open front porch with a second story deck on top of that uh, on the front side of the building. Uh, the lot is a non-conforming uh, existing lot of record. The dwelling is non-conforming as well as it sits about 31 feet from the uh, front property line. In the R2 zone, the required setback is 40 feet. Um, 
it is not in a flood hazard area and it is not in shoreland overlay. Um, and so I think we'll go through the, uh, the appeal with the uh, Girons and take it from there. Do you have anything you wanted to add to what Mr. Longstaff said? I mean, I know you presented it before. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Eddie Giron. This is my wife, Dulce Giron. Um, uh, we basically, you know, it's like a, what we're going to do is A by 36. We asked in the beginning 12, we were thinking, but definitely it's no, and then we reduce it to 8 to 36. And uh, in the neighborhood, we see the house number uh, 14 the house number 16, and also the house number three, do they just get a permit? They are building a big deck in the front of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it's gonna be any impact uh, different or with the neighbors. We even ask the neighbors if, you know, I don't know if uh, uh, they, they have to say something or not, but uh, we talk to the neighbors and they really happy to we fix the house because their houses, they fix it and we are trying to, we have to redo the exterior of the house, and then before we do the exterior, we say, we're gonna see if they let us do right. the deck, you know, to. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is read the questions that are associated with the, with the appeal that you have yes. and ask you to just mm -hmm. give the answers. Okay. okay, so number one, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Can you say it again, please, because my wife is wants to fill it up. Uh, actually, I forget when I okay. use my coffee. Okay. Yeah, but I can answer that. Okay. Um, would you like a copy yes. of the yes. application that you submitted? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yep, yes. no problem. We're on page four. Thank you. Questions. Sorry. Yep. We're on page four, and I just read the first question. Do you, mm. Oh, do you want to read the answer? Yep, perfect. Yeah, the, the port is not affected the general conditions of the property because there are a couple of homes that are similar approaches with the similar dimensions or our proposed approaches. Okay, thank you. Two, the granting of the variance will not produce any undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or will not have any unreasonable unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the abutting properties? Um, I don't think this is going to produce any indicable changes on the character of the neighborhood that we saw. It will only maintain similar characteristics on the other homes and neighborhoods. Maybe uh, you know from from the bathroom and the, we want to make it a beautiful forest place, yeah. yeah. So much to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. No. Number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Morning and uh, also after evening, I 
and the porch, we don't have a utility, so we don't have any door to go outside to the front. Mm -hmm. I have to stay inside all day, and I would like to stay outside in the evening to the, enjoy the breeze of the ocean. Right. Um, so, I mean, part of this question is no feasible alternative, and so I think when you're looking at the plan, you're kind of curious as to what other options you explored on the house as to where you might be able to put a deck. And um, I didn't know, you know, sometimes we have applicants who come, you know, we say we looked on this side of the house to see if we could put a deck here, and it wouldn't work because of these issues. And um, so when I look at one of the plans you have, I didn't know if there was a possibility for it to be somewhere else and if that was something that you had explored or is this just simply where you want to put the deck? That's something where we're going to put for the, uh, have the view and basically you know, the front of the house. Mm -hmm. And the side we have a the driveway. Number five, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with surrounding properties. Yes. Now you had said before that there are other properties around who have these second floor decks yes. that you can um down this way? Yeah, like that. More to parking lot. Six, the granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Yeah. Uh, the value of doing no change in natural environment, uh, we will make sure no harm is done to the natural surroundings and the land, uh, and the land by keeping the project right to a minimum um, um, proper Property is not number seven. The property is not located in the shoreland zone. No. Okay. I can verify that. Okay. Thank you. Does the board have any questions at this time regarding application? The answers that they've given. One question, and just follow up on this issue, um, just to confirm: Has there been any thoughts? Locating the porch and deck uh, towards the rear of the building, off to the side, as looking at the plan. The reason we want to build it, the front is I think for the view, as you can see, to enjoy the front of the view, the water, the ocean, and this. You see, we just have a closed windows at the front. It's getting kind of hot, or even it's like the door or anything. When they build the house, that's how they build it back then. And we would like to have the breeze with the hot weather and have a little deck. Also, we have all, actually, we have a, a small deck in the front. 
front border the round window in the front? And the front is already a little piece of deck. You just want to like extend it a little. A little bit spatula there in the front. It's no, already not there. Front. It's already there all yeah. the way to the right the corner in the staircase. It's, it's a little We have eight feet there. It's already. Okay. Yeah, it's already in the front, just in the first floor. We have a little bit more, like 12, but uh, just the, the little deck is like With eight. The to the public. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add? Anyone public <laughs> hearings? Do we receive any letters or emails? No, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, no emails uh, or letters? Okay. We only received one uh, email. It was in favor. I believe it was the neighbor to the left of the structure. I can't remember her name, but it was in favor of the Close the public hearing section. And now we're going to go through the questions and do the finding of facts. You can have a seat if you'd like. Thank you. All right, number one, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Ms. Torrens, would you like to start, please? value of the property is in that, that exposure to or the view of the ocean, so I, I understand um, and I don't I don't see where I mean, there is another spot where they could still maximize that. I don't know that that's agree that in order to maximize the views of the ocean, um, the variance would be required for the side of the building. But, uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> you know, the need for the variance is due to the fact that the house is too close to the front of the road. Do something in front of it. Answer one. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the circumstances of the property just being where it is. That's the reason why this looks like it should be met. We've seen some pictures of some other properties as well. Look like they did similar things. Right, I agree. Um, you know, because the house is so close to the front that you can need to be in a situation here where you just want to maximize the property to do that. Um, and other houses in the neighborhood have the same sort of porches as you demonstrated. But if they did, I would do it and you would not. Um, all in favor of number one being met. Number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of the abutting properties. Uh, I see it as an improvement, and not that, not that there's anything undesirable about the house now, but I believe that this would actually be an improvement and, and, and um, still be consistent with the, with the characteristics of other homes that are abutting and, uh, and adjacent. Um, so I think that number two has been met. I agree that the proposal will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect. And its intent is, will match the neighborhood characteristics. The granting of the variance uh, certainly is going to improve the neighborhood. I think this board would ever pass a variance that didn't improve it. 
Yeah, I would agree. We've seen that half the houses right around there have similar features, maybe smaller, maybe larger. Uh, so there's about half the properties around there that are conforming with this and look similar to this. So I would say that's the most. Well, I agree. I mean, we just pulled up a bunch of houses in the neighborhood showing the porches in the front, you know, and I think anyone would agree that putting a porch on that would be a nice change in the true value to the, to the properties abutting it. So all in favor of number two being met? Number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. This one is the one I struggle with because this is, uh, I, I don't believe that the current owners take, took any, you know, are responsible for this, but whoever decided where the house was going to sit um, could be considered responsible. However, we don't know what the rest of the lot is like and whether or not it could have been set back further and allowed for this to happen within, well within the range. The range. But I, I don't think uh, I don't think it's any responsibility necessarily of a prior owner or the applicant. I agree. I do not believe it's the result of the applicant or prior owner. The practical <coughs> the practical difficulty is uh, is required because of the location of the house that's not due to any action by anybody at any point in time. I would think on this probably it would put this more out of conformance with the zoning. Who knows when it was originally built and what their thoughts process were. Things were probably much different back then as far as the zoning regulations and setbacks and everything. So yeah, I believe that the uh, action was not an applicant or prior owner. The house was constructed in 1960, so it was prior to zoning. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree. I mean, we're here because of the position of the house, and the applicant did not put the house there. So all in favor of number three being met. Number four. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. I think no other reasonable um, alternative is really available that's going to allow them to, to get really the, the, the property is really meant to be enriched and, and, and meant to maximize that and I don't think there's any other practical way to do that. I feel that there may be alternatives beyond current proposed design so that may restrict sunlight to the views. Um, however, if their intent is to see the ocean, the current design certainly accommodates that. If you want to view the ocean, you got to be facing it. It's the only place you can do it, really. Um, I'd, I'd like to say what, one other thing about these things. This is down in, in Pine Point, and I'm sure the town within the next five or six years is going to be going down and visiting the zoning down there like they did at Higgins Beach. And one of the big results of the zoning at Higgins Beach was to move the property, front property lines a lot closer to the road. And I'm sure the same thing is going to be happening now uh, at Pine Point. Consequently, 10 years from now, this would be absolutely no issue. So, just as a cycle. Unfortunately, this is the toughest one. No other feasible alternative is except a variance. Um, there could be different windows that are put in. There could be different things that happen without the debt. This is the toughest one to overcome. We're told basically in most of the processes we go to that if there's no other, th this, this is a huge test to pass and just about anything should really pass it. So this is one that's difficult and I think there could be other feasible alternatives. And unfortunately it may not be what you like, but there could be other feasible alternatives. Uh, 
I'm a little bit in agreement with Mr. Crockett. Um, I don't really feel like you've demonstrated tonight that you can't put a deck on the side of the house. Um, you know, everyone deserves to have a deck on their property. Um, having a view maybe from the side would be better than none, no deck at all. Um, you know, we could lose, you know, we can deny it today and you'll get no deck at all, and um, I'm not sure what your options are then. But uh, typically, applicants sometimes will meet with Mr. Longstaff and kind of review the options, and um, typically, you know, they'll sometimes, presenters will show us other options that just aren't feasible. Uh, personally, um, you know, we're not supposed to so much use emotion in this, so it's, it's really unfortunate, and I, I, I appreciate why you want to put the deck there, but when I'm looking at the word feasible, you know, I think we all kind of, Ms. Torrance kind of maybe has a looser definition of what feasible is. I kind of am a little bit more. Um, I don't really feel like I've really seen any other options to do this. Um, I don't know what the layout of the inside of the house is. You know, if there's a reason why there couldn't be a deck on the side that maybe, you know, you could at least see from the, so from the side, see the view from the end of the deck. Um, so like Mr. Crockett, I struggle with this one. Um, so does everyone feel that number four has been met? Number five, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with surrounding properties. Um, I, I think this is going to bring it into a little bit more, a little slightly more conformance. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of differentiation in the, the street views as, we were, as Brian was scrolling through. Um, but I do think this particular style of house seems to match with a, with a, with a front porch, seems to match more to closely to the other similarly styled houses that are like that versus the couple of ranches that we saw that were not anywhere near like properties. And um, I would probably expect that we'd probably see some change in those over the years. Um, I think that this does bring it closer into conformance with similar homes in the neighborhood. I feel that as time moves yeah. forward, there may be additional houses in the neighborhood with front porches and decks. However, I do not feel that this is currently in such a state that it is not in conformance with surrounding properties. Without being able to really see the other properties, it's kind of difficult to answer this question. Uh, the way the house sits now is in conformance with the zoning. And this is pushing it outside the zoning package. So I guess the answer to this question is no, but this is a fluky question in this situation. It's kind of a 50 50. No one wants a cookie cutter house. No one wants the same house that looks exactly like their neighbors. We've seen like four or five of them down there that have decks. Some may be small, five feet, three feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, whatever it may be. It's half and half. I mean, I'm sure if all the other folks wanted to put a deck in the tie up, they'd probably want to do it as well. So I don't think this changes anything about variance. I think it <coughs> probably brings it more into conformance with some of the properties, but it's looking like the other properties without it too. So. Either way, I think it's fine. Right, I think there's, I think the properties we're gonna see over the years are gonna be moving t more towards this trend. We're gonna see more houses being fixed up and these sort of things. So in conformance, you know, there definitely are more houses down there that are like that. I think we're gonna see more, I think as Mr. Karen commented, and um, we'll see that in the future. Um, so all in favor of number five being that. Number six, the granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Um, Mr. Longstaff's comment that it's not in the following zone. Uh, there's nothing that uh, that 
that I can see that would change even the footprint of the house because the, the existing footprint seems to already be the out over the, you know, this is just going on top of another component. Is that, well, am I yeah. understanding correctly? Um, with the chairman's permission, it's a, uh, it is increasing the footprint because there is a small there is a small porch there now, but they're extending that. Okay. And and then they're also coming out of the building with an upper deck as well. So I mean it does it does increase the footprint, and that's why if you recall we wanted them to demonstrate that they weren't exceeding the twenty percent right coverage, right that's the which right. they're right under it at I think nineteen point eight square feet, <laughs> or nineteen point eight percent. So they do they do fall within that. So my memory was serving well, but uh, and thank you for clearing that up. Uh, but I still, I still don't see where it would really present an adverse effect on the natural environment. I agree. I don't see any problem with the local or natural environment. I got no problem with that. <coughs> yeah, there's no resource of vegetation down there that this is going to interfere with. I mean, you're not going to displace any animals or any type of plants that may be growing down there. You've already got the deck there. Lawns probably mowed around it, so I don't see this type of, have any problem with the effect on the natural environment. All right, and when we are only extending the porch minimally, I really don't think there's going to be an impact. So all in favor of number six being met? And we established number seven that the property is not in the shoreland. All in favor, number seven. I don't, I don't know about that. Mr. Wayne <coughs> said it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Brian said it wasn't. Oh, I thought you said no, you hadn't said It's not in the shoreline zone. It isn't. Oh, okay. Okay. I think you need to explain. Okay. Okay. Okay, so because this is a practical difficulty appeal to variance, we like to focus sometimes on the definition of what a practical difficulty is. And the courts kind of set out a couple standards that they like the boards to review and to make sure that they feel that the applicant has met. So practical difficulty is a case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance sought would preclude the use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and would also result in a significant economic injury. So we're really kind of breaking down to two questions kind of at the end that we want to make sure that we've established that we've kind of covered these. And that is, are you being precluded from using something, from doing something that other people in the zone are doing? And if you are not allowed to have this deck, are you going to be having a significant economic injury because you can't build this deck? And so what I want to kind of do now is go down through the board and have everyone maybe make a quick comment on these two. That's kind of how I've done it, is broke it down to if you feel like they're being precluded from use that's allowed, and if you feel like they're going to be suffering a significant economic <coughs> injury. Mr. Ryan. Um, I don't think there's a significant economic hardship that is going to be a result of not being able to build the deck. Um, and I, I, so I, I do think we, we have an issue, we have a problem trying to actually reconcile this and, and for the courts, even though it's Two 
by the big economic uh, loss? And what's the other one? So if they're <coughs> Chair's permission, that if you recall, we had a, a practical difficulty appeal a few, well, last year, I guess it was. The courts remanded it back. It was challenged, and the courts remanded it back to us and said that we did not conduct findings of fact and conclusions as to whether or not the uh, granting of the appeal, uh, that the granting of the appeal would, would both um, offer them a use of the property which otherwise would be precluded and that we didn't demonstrate or the applicant didn't demonstrate that there was significant economic injury. So we were asked to find on those two points which is really the definition of what a practical difficulty is. And so I would, I would just offer for the board's consideration that the Girons could build a deck a second story balcony uh, on the property somewhere. So the variance or the lack of variance is not precluding them from that particular use. That's a use that's permitted in the, in the zone. You can have a deck, you can have a balcony, you can have a porch. Those are uses that you can have. The fact is that they want to put it on the front of the house and unfortunately the front of the house is already too close to the street. So that's that's the difficulty, but it's not precluding them from having a residential use and having those types of components added to the house. It's just precluding them from doing it in that location. <coughs> the second point is whether or not the, the board needs to determine whether or not the applicant has demonstrated that without the variance, they would suffer economic injury. They would definitely uh, have, have brought out the, the reasons why they want the, the, uh, the deck and the porch uh, in order to enjoy the ocean air and, and be, still be out of the sun and, and so on and so forth. But that's not economic injury. That's more of a health injury, if you will, not economic injury necessarily. So does the board feel that within the, the, the explanations and responses that the uh, uh, applicant has offered, have they demonstrated economic injury. Those two elements have to show, somehow be shown in, in the applicant's application. I have one comment to that, that that's, uh, this is the part that I'm struggling with. I assume that at the time that you purchased the house, or at the time they purchased the house, the health condition, the health of was not at this stage of the, where this was an issue. And so their intent was that you know, they could enjoy the, the front yard and enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the beach. And, um, and now her health has changed that they can't. <coughs> now, my my. my part I struggle with is, is this is this similar to somebody needing a, a wheelchair ramp in the front or you know in the, it, it, not necessarily you know in that in that there was a certain access that was expected that is now no longer an option and I don't know I this is I'm just putting this out there as a comment um, I'm still not sure where I stand on that point Mr. Blaze will you can you make your input <laughs> On you. I'm going to pass. <laughs> Mr. Crockett. Uh, well, variance of saw, we call it preclude a use. I don't think it's precluding a use if you didn't have the deck. You could put bare windows in there, you could enjoy it that way, you could get the view out there without having the deck. I understand that got the illness, but unfortunately that's not something that's in here. It's not precluding the use of it. You could, you could do it another way, I guess, without having the deck. And basically, 
I don't think it's going to be a significant economic injury. I think if you look to sell your property for what you bought it for, what you look to sell it for today, you'd probably get a pretty good value because of where it is. I don't think not building the deck is going to require you folks to have a significant <coughs> economic injury, unfortunately. I mean, we have to go over what the guidelines are and adhere to them. So I would say this is not being that. I don't see a full financial economic injury here. So decks are allowed in this neighborhood, and I think we've kind of established that there is space and opportunity to maybe put it somewhere else. <coughs> so you put forth today a deck that you wanted to put on the front of the house. Um, there, you are not precluded because I do feel like there is other options on other sides of the house that you could put the deck. Um, I mean, to my point, it's very beautiful. It's a very beautiful house, very nice neighborhood, and. Um, you know, I really don't think there'd be any significant economic injury. If we didn't have the deck, I don't think it would, you know, maybe Ms. Torrance can comment on this. I'm sure I don't know how much it would affect the value when you go to resell, um, but I don't know how much of a difference it would be. That's, that's kind of, it's hard to say. I, right. I, think, I think at this particular point, I, I don't think we can justify the variance. You know, I'd love to be able to, and I think probably at a future point, if zoning changes, um, you know, <coughs> there are other things like the Higgins Beach code change. Uh, I think it's it's probably going to be something that will be reasonable in the future. But unfortunately, I don't think I don't see where we're in a position right now to to support it. Right. Right. And I mean, as much as I like, <coughs> you know, we're really locked into the words here and by what the courts have told us to do and the things that we need to consider when we're doing a practical difficulty variance, I feel. Um, do I have a motion? Any other comments? I, sorry. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2652. Second. Uh, so if no one seconds the motion to approve, What was I'm sorry, what was the motion? To accept for the, for the whole appeal. Did I was I supposed to vote? Yeah, we need to vote on number eight as well. Oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Take a step back. <laughs> number eight. So uh, all in favor of number eight being met. And that is the practical difficulty. It's definitely front there. Uh, opposed? I make a motion to approve appeal number 2652 as presented. Second. So we have a second. Okay, all in all favor? All in favor. All opposed? All opposed. So that's a denial. Just, uh, Mr. Chair, um, if you guys want to contact me, um, we can talk about some other alternatives, and I can show you some stuff that might you might want to explore, and maybe you know maybe come back with a different proposal. Um, something that's if it's significantly different than what you've proposed here, you can come back within the same year. If you, you can't come back with the same proposal in the same year. Probably nothing's going to happen with the zoning there this year, as Mr. Blaze was talking about. It would probably be either next year or the year after, if at all. But um, there might be some other alternatives that would still get you uh, a view of the ocean and some outside air and <coughs> allow you to enjoy the property more than you currently are. Um, so I'll just start with that. I'm, I'm available to, to discuss it at your convenience. Can I ask you one question? Sure. The first floor, at least with the little deck we have, we allow to put like a nice long better between the deck and the first floor. 
Um, in other words, just expand that that entrance across the front. Yeah, that's, that's, really that's, really that's really actually really part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's already there. It's already in a stair. The stairs there, can stay. Stairs have a little, they can pass in the first floor. So you want to just replace the stairs yeah. with the deck? Yeah, we are having to um, do repair the house. And then we, we don't need anything in the first floor because. We could probably talk about that as a, as a repair or a rebuild of those stairs. Yeah, yeah. Do why don't you contact me uh, after afterwards someday this week yeah. or next? Yeah, we we understand yeah. that and, and we sympathize with that. We, we wish we could. <laughs> it's yes, just yeah. we yeah. just can't. Yeah. I really wish we yeah. could. The guidelines okay. don't include the or anything, so yeah. we have to wait from that. But, but if you have time, make an appointment and come in and see with we'll, we'll chat. Yeah. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We're going to get into appeal number 2655, which is a reduction in parking allowance appeal by Gerson Road Development, LLC. Fifteen Road, Assessor's Map U033, Lot 051. I'm going to ask Mr. Longstaff to do a quick introduction on the time. So this is, this is one that I don't believe in my time here we've seen. Uh, I don't know if any of, uh, probably Mr. Crockett or Mr. Blaze may have seen one in the past. I'm not. There is a provision in our ordinance. Um, it's not within the, the appeals and the variances <coughs> section, section five. It's within the the out uh, the uh, off street parking um, provision in the ordinance, which is section nine C F, which states that in specific uh, cases where it is demonstrated that a particular building can be occupied or used carried on with fewer parking spaces than required under the section, the board of appeals may reduce the requirements for off street parking. Upon finding that such reduction will not detract from neighborhood values, inconvenience the public, or increase congestion in the street. So the back story on this property, which I'm sure uh, Ms. St. Clair, Clair will get into, is that the project was approved in 2015 as a senior housing, 36 unit, one bedroom uh, units, uh, senior housing project. The requirement for off-street parking is one parking space per unit plus one parking space per employee. They were able to generate 14 uh, or create 40 parking spaces, which is more than they needed. I think they, they needed 31 and, or excuse me, 37, and they created 40. So they had a little more than they needed, but now that the market has changed and they wish to convert it from senior housing to multifamily housing, Multifamily housing requires 1.5 parking spaces per unit, and therefore um, they don't have quite enough. They need about another 14 parking spaces to meet that requirement. So they are exercising their right to bring to the Zoning Board of Appeals a request to reduce the required amount of parking um, should the board find that they have demonstrated those three aspects that I mentioned a moment ago. That they're uh, not going to reduce neighborhood values, inconvenience the public, or increase congestion in the street. So it's the board's job tonight to determine if those three conditions have been demonstrated. And if not, then the board does not is not required to um, approve of the amount of parking that's there. The applicant will try to um, demonstrate to the board why um, it is not going to be possible to create another 14 spaces and I think that's 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 the, the game tonight <laughs> thank you Mrs. Sinclair David couldn't you hold the mic for her <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, and, and Ryan did a great job of uh, introducing the project. My name is Melissa St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates, and I'm here tonight on behalf of Griffin Road Development, LLC. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, Griffin Road Apartments was originally approved as a need-restricted 
senior uh, housing facility. There are 36 one-bedroom apartments in this building. Uh, it was originally approved by the planning board back in 2015, and it went through construction. Uh, and in 2017, they actually added the three parking spaces that are down on the lower end here. Uh, as Brian noted, under the senior housing parking requirements in the ordinance, one space per apartment unit is required plus a space for any staff that might be on site. So originally the approval was for 37 spaces. Uh, back in 2017, those three additional parking spaces were added uh, in this lower end here. In um, marketing the property, if you will, uh, for uh, senior housing, the applicant has determined that the market conditions are not supportive for occupancy, full occupancy of the building. They actually have about 22 apartment units that are rented right now. Each of the leases for each of those apartment buildings, uh, apartment units, carry a restriction that the tenant can have no more than one parking, uh, one vehicle uh, per unit. They are one bedroom units. The applicants are looking to convert the building to allow a little bit more of a broad market reach to multifamily housing. By doing that, they would still carry that lease restriction of one parking space per unit. The fact that it's a one bedroom unit restricts the number of people that would be living in those units anyway, just simply because of the size themselves. But as Brian noted, in the ordinance, parking for multifamily is actually 1.5 spaces per unit. So we're left with a deficit right now of about 14 parking spaces. And so as part of our proposal to you folks, we'd like to have the opportunity to exercise the option that is in the, bear, in the um, ordinance to allow a reduction in parking requirements as authorized by you folks. With that, we would be able to then go to the planning board and ask for a conversion from senior housing to multifamily housing. So uh, as Brian noted, we uh, do have some site constraints that we are dealing with, so I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that. Uh, the property, although it's 3.24 acres in size, uh, does have some natural resource restrictions that are on it. This sort of blue area here and up in here are wetlands that were mapped on the site. We actually have a dam that comes down through here as well. Can you take your camera over there? <coughs> so we actually have, there's a drainage easement that actually conveys drainage from Route 1 that comes down on this side of the property. So this area here, are the wetlands that I talked about. All in this area here on either side are sloped areas uh, that drop down and there's actually a drainage course that runs down through that has this yellow line here is actually the 75 foot uh, area outside of that drainage course as it comes down through. So as you can see, we're dealing with, when we went through the original design, we're dealing with trying to keep things as tight as we can. We actually did have to get uh, state level permits in order to build on what we had there. So our sort of development window is really more focused down in this area here. Griffin Road, this is Route 1 right here. So Griffin Road comes down, enters in the site. We have all of our parking uh, associated with uh, the building in this area here. This area here has been set aside for gardens for the residents. Each, each one of the residents has the opportunity to have a garden space uh, as part of that plan. These three green blobs here, those are the grass center drainage soil filters, part of the stormwater management facilities that are uh, for control of runoff as well as treatment of runoff. So we're kind of restricted to this development area here. And we, we do have, obviously, a lot of pieces of the puzzle that need to be met uh, in order to do that. So one of the things that, coupled with the fact that we already have restrictions on each of the units that would only allow a tenant to have one uh, parking space or one vehicle uh, on the site, we'd like to be able to proceed uh, with that conversion and maintain the existing number of parking spaces that we have on the property now. <coughs> All right. So, I mean, we don't really have questions to go through. Can we discuss this I mean, first? I think what you need to do probably is, is just to look at those three items that need to be demonstrated and discuss each one of those and, and the merits of whatever information has been provided and whether or not that you feel <coughs> has demonstrated that. I think okay. 
questions. I don't need to ask them of her. We just need to now discuss them. Well, I mean, you can ask any questions of the applicant that you'd like. Okay. And that's certainly to, in order to, to, to get to an answer on each one of those. Right. Criteria. Does anyone have any initial questions? Yeah. yeah. We did address each one of those in, yeah. the, in the Yes. yes. Yep. Absolutely. Do the existing residents who are all seniors know that you guys are doing this? I do not know the answer to that question. Um, I believe that they probably do, but I don't know the answer to that question. It's certainly yeah. something that mm -hmm. should be up and up. And I'm very concerned about that. Um, I'm a little curious about the timeline as to what would, um, why they chose to go with senior housing and the restrictions that come with it back in 2014. Um, I mean, it's been four years. I, maybe you can talk about the changing in market. This seems really quickly. I, you know, I, I, my understanding is it wasn't actually built and functioning until 2017, if that's correct. So they've only really been operating as a senior housing for about a year. Um, and so I don't know what happened with the planning, and I don't know if you know what happened, if there's a reason why they went with this restriction or with senior housing, if there was some behind, more behind that. Um, I do believe that at the time of the original uh, permitting process for that, uh, the vision was that this would be um, facilitated through mainstay housing. And that did not happen. And so the timeline from approval to actually going to construction was a delay because of that process. The applicants did decide to move forward with the construction of the project uh, on a traditional uh, basis for that. Uh, but as part of that, they discovered that there just isn't the market that was anticipated in this particular area uh, for senior housing, but they're confident that multifamily housing would allow them to have full occupancy. Right, so you're not at full, they're not at full occupancy, but right before they opened, was it when they when they came in two thousand seven for the administrative approval? Was it already opening and running, and they were opened and said, "Oh, we need right new spots right away"? No, um, it was just at the sort of closure of construction. Okay. I guess I don't entirely agree that the market is dried up for senior housing. Sable Oaks was just built, which is all senior housing, and there's a lot of people in there, and I think they're pretty close to getting all their units filled up. So I, I don't agree that there's no warrant for senior housing, but this needs to be changed to regular family housing. You've got, you've got places popping up all over the place that are senior housing, and they're all in the area, between <coughs> Cumberland, Falmouth, Cape Elizabeth, South Portland. So with that being said, I mean, how do you think, you know, if it's going to be senior housing as opposed to affect neighborhood values? I mean, does anyone feel that, you know, there's going to be a change in the neighborhood when the neighbor is now not a, you know, 85-year-old person, but a 25-year-old living, because it's all one-bedroom apartments. So, I mean, for me, you know, I kind of think of neighborhood values and inconvenience to the public. What sort of renters are you going to be getting now? I would love some comments from the board. I think that's Mr. Blaze's comment, is basically, you marketed this to seniors for a place for them to be with other seniors. And now there could be a 24-year-old kid that moves in there playing music all night long, having a party or whatever, and the seniors are not exactly in what they bought in for when they originally bought these units. Like, did I address that the way you were thinking? That's cool. All right. Right. Well, and I also, to further comment on that, to increase congestion in the street, and I have a couple apartments, just a couple, but as soon as you rent to one person, there's suddenly two people there immediately, and two cars, three cars, and so they can't park here. Where are they going to be parking? Are they going to be parking at, you know, at, I know that there's a plaza right there. Are they going to be parking on the street? Are they going to be parking in people's lawns? You know, and you, you said yourself, it's very constricted. Um, and so that's definitely a concern of mine, is kind of where this overflow is going to be going. I mean, that's great. They want to be functioning at capacity, but pure capacity. I mean, you're going to have one car for each apartment. I just... I don't see it in the two apartments I have. <laughs> We're already seeing parking issues with a couple of places in town. We're seeing parking issues with an RV that oh my gosh. cannot, I mean, there's off-street parking, 20, 30 cars sometimes at night. And if you ever go over to the facility right across the street behind the now Sitco station, that's a 
uh, memory care center, they basically don't have enough parking at all when it comes to the holiday season and one or two people come to visit. I don't think practically anybody that's in that unit has a car because it's more Alzheimer's and more long-term memory care. So there may be a few, but you put one or two family members in there, that parking lot becomes impassable. Because they just, I mean, these are two things I'm already looking at in Scarborough with this massive parking problem. It's when anything happens under the, well, NRV is every day because people are always going there. Madam Chair, if I could just add a Absolutely. couple of things. Yeah. Um, the applicant owns the property and manages the property, and they own and manage a number of different facilities for all types of residential throughout the state. Mm -hmm. They're very familiar from a management perspective of what they do accept and don't accept with that, and they're very proud of the work that they do in keeping their facilities in compliance with the requirements and keeping it a good place residents to live. And so, although there may be situations in other uh, housing projects that do struggle with those issues, I do believe that the applicants are very much attuned to that just because they have such a volume of apartments that they do rent and own uh, and personally manage for the site. The comments that you made, I do understand certainly about the growth of, of uh, traffic during the house. situation that they're having with the struggle with parking. I think that when we're talking about a residential setting where the tenants have already been put on notice that they can only have one vehicle, that you do have an owner that is very much involved, I do believe that we're not dealing with an adverse impact to the general public or to the neighborhood. I know personally from going through the review process, we dealt with all the folks that lived on Ripley Road very closely when we went through the review very much involved and very much concerned that the neighbors are satisfied. I asked the question before I came here tonight, have there been any complaints from the neighbors about parking or, or anything uh, from that? The only comment that came back was that there had been a couple of concerns about people and the speed on Griffin Road, and that's it, but not a parking issue and no other complaints. And for the manager to be able to give me that information within a matter of 20 minutes, to me, tells me that they're very much involved and very much on top of things mm -hmm. and wouldn't be proceeding if they felt that this was an adverse effect to the neighbors. You're going to be completely changing the dynamics of this, though. So you're going to have different neighbors. And I, I guess I'm kind of taken back by the point that you, can't, that you can get that to us, but you can't give us the residents that are already there, being talked to already, to find out what their concerns or thoughts would be with someone 24 years old moving into a senior retirement community. If you get the other stuff, I mean, I think you should have got that as well. I granted that was a very good question, and I neglected to ask it. Well, I think for the board to consider, I mean, when we look at inconvenience to the public, I mean, the public includes the people who are currently occupying this building, I feel. And that is kind of our job is to think of them as well as, I know there's lots of people who are not seniors looking for housing as well. Um, I personally have concerns about not about the restrictions that were placed for senior housing and coming before us. I mean, I understand you're gonna go before planning and maybe that's planning thing, but before us today is us for us to consider, not planning, for us to consider the neighborhood value and the inconvenience of the public and the increased congestion in the street. Um, I feel like we've addressed those. Um, I have concerns about the values of the properties around them if suddenly, again, there's a different clientele coming in. I have concerns about the about the inconvenience to not only the people that live there, but again, the, the change from going from seniors to anyone, um, the fact that they're a one bedroom apartment. Um, so we get a certain type of clientele. I do also want to point out that the request tonight is strong, uh, strictly on parking. We're not, we have to go before the planning board to get the change in use. Right. And so this is strictly on the So, why can't it go where the gardens are? We provided the gardens as an attribute um, for the residents uh, in the building, and uh, to be able to try to relocate those, we'd have to try to move and, and adjust. We would not be able, we looked at that particular area that the gardens are, 
we would not be able to get the full amount of parking uh, in that area that would be necessary. So we would still be coming before you folks uh, to seek some sort of a reduction on that. One of the things that uh, Mr. Crockett had pointed out was the, the um, new senior living facility uh, in South Portland and how well occupied it is. And I have had an opportunity to take a look at those plans and there are a number of residential amenities that are provided the residents in that, and I'm not surprised that given all the nice things that they are, uh, they would be uh, enjoying that that is a full uh, facility. We want to make sure that we do have amenities for uh, the residents uh, in the building, and so the, the, the uh, garden space, the ability, we have a walking trail that comes through and comes out uh, into these areas here. That was all part of the review process when we went through uh, the planning board review. How many units are currently occupied and how many people are using the gardens right now out of those units? I don't know the answer to the number of people using the gardens. There are 22 out of the 36 units that are occupied. Is anybody using the gardens? I don't know the answer to that. I believe that they are. May I ask what, the, what current rents are and also uh, what, what is the volume of staff or staff parking that would be needed for after this? I don't know what the current rates are. I do know that they are market rate units. Um, and as far as the staff, there was one uh, staff member who was on site uh, throughout the day uh, to provide anything that anybody needed uh, for the residents in the building. For the conversion, would they have staff on site all the time, do you know? I don't believe that they would have an on site staff at that point. Yep, and then to me, I'm just thinking in my head, okay, so who's going to be enforcing this one parking rule when you don't have staff there all the time? Um, and I, I know it's not good to have tenants talking to each other about parking spots. <laughs> um, I don't know if the board has any other questions. I, I, I just have a few comments, and yeah. that is that I, I don't, I personally don't have a problem with this. I, I think... Uh, over at certain points in my life um, and showing a great number of people properties over the years <laughs> um, and I think people tend to, to gravitate towards communities that do have similar features for them or similar populations to them um, I think that you know we're talking about a difference of having a minimum age restriction of what 62 55 55 I'm old enough to live there so 55 we're talking about yeah so we're talking about 55 plus versus, you know, 18 plus. Um, I don't think you're necessarily going to see a lot of people that are in the, um, you know, the young college age kids or whatever renting here. I think you're you're looking, you know, and especially if there is a parking rule with, that's only going to allow for one vehicle um, per unit. I think what you're going to see is. Uh, professional use, uh, senior, still senior use, um, and I think it, it's one of the things that has been noted um, in a lot of articles that I've read recently that have been trying to get these, to incorporating our, our senior populations with our, our earlier aged populations to try to, to allow for communities that actually do have, have an interaction of the two. Um, I don't. I don't see where this. If the rules are enforced, and if the rules are agreed to, and, and expressed clearly up front, I don't see where there's a problem with this. I'd like to see the planning board be able to, to make a decision on this, or versus us. Um, I don't believe that there'd be any increase uh, in inconvenience to the public. Um, I think you know if you put in a one-bedroom place, you're not going to get you know one-bedroom senior housing could have two people per unit, just the same as one-bedroom non-senior housing. Um, and you know, with with the way Uber is these days, we're seeing a lot more younger pop people even without cars. So I I don't see where that would make a difference. 
um, and increase congestion if you don't have. Uh, I've seen senior housing that has had more traffic than non-senior housing because you have you know, caregivers, uh, medical personnel coming in, you know, physical therapists and things like that that will come to the home or whatever. I, I see where you can have just as much traffic from that population as as the younger population. Um, so I, I honestly, I think part of my issue is I don't necessarily agree that the initial planning should have been that, that there should be a reduction um, for senior housing. You know, I, I, I think parking is, is important, um, but I also don't, I don't, I don't see where this would be too few too, too few spaces. Um, you know, I think that the, the, there is an issue of you're going to have to make sure that there's some way of monitoring it, and I don't know that that's something we can put any kind of restriction on. You know, um, I think that's again for the planning board to kind of decide. No, and I mean you talk about monitoring, and I. To me, that leads to inconvenience to the public. Um, I, I, I sort of disagree with Ms. Torrance. Um, I think that if you're opening up all one-bedroom apartments, which is going to attract, you know, whoever you're going to attract. Um, I know lots of people sign leases with lots of restrictions and lots of rules, and they break them left and right, and they don't really care what they say. Um, I think I'm concerned about, you know, who's going to be enforcing this and how, again, this is going to inconvenience the public of, you know, I'm going to tow this car because they're in my parking spot and this parking lot's full of people parking down Griffin Road because they have um, nowhere else to park. Um, I, I really see this being an inconvenience when you want, I mean, who doesn't want to have full capacity? Who doesn't want to have a full capacity, full, full department? Um, but at that point, feel like you're not going to have enough parking spaces. I don't know if anyone has any other questions or any other questions, comments. I kind of wanted to read this again. So this is what we'll... Sorry. Go ahead, no, no, no. <laughs> Just a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah. Are the parking spots numbered? They are not numbered on the site. I believe that they do have allocations for each unit, but there's nothing in which that they are is there at the end of Griffin Road uh, a light, or is it just a stop sign? Uh, it is a stop sign. Okay. I think the major variable is going from seniors to younger folks. Younger folks don't really seem to care sometimes. I lived across from a two-family house, and there was consistently six cars in the driveway with two bed, uh, one family house with two bedrooms. And I've also had place where I'd gone to a friend's house and they had one bedroom and there were like four cars outside for that one unit. It's great if you can enforce it. It's much more difficult to enforce it with younger folks. Seniors, you might be able to say, hey, you've got one parking space and that's it. Well, you're like, okay, I, I, I don't know. And if your rent's very reasonable, you'll get a couple of friends that will rent that together and they'll pull, pull out couch in the one bedroom. It's just the variable of renting to the younger folks, I think, is what could cause some problems with this. I know, and I think with 36 units, you're you're bound to get a couple troublemakers. Um, and I think that's kind of, I think it's a little difficult. This For me, this sort of seems like a planning thing. But again, I'm going to read this because I really think it's important for all of us to understand that the Board of Appeals may reduce the requirements for an off-street parking upon finding that such reduction will not detract from neighborhood values, inconvenience the public, or increase congestion in the street. May I ask another question? Um, you had mentioned that your, uh, your research um, determined that at the flower beds, the garden, there was not insufficient space for the number of parking spots required. Um, how many did you find would be allowed, or could you fit, even though it was less than the total? I believe when we did the original planning, these three were not there, and I believe we were able to get The far end of that diagram, is that a parking space? I'm sorry, what? The far end of the diagram over there on the other side, is that a lot for parking down there? Here no, no, here? no, I'm talking, I'm talking way on the side. 
at the end of Griffin Road? Down here? Nope. Go all the way down to the end of Griffin Road. Way down. Go to Route 1. That's right it. Right here. Uh, yes, that is a parking area. Um, that is actually associated with the uh, retail center that is right on the street, on, main, on Route 1. And so I'm familiar with this area, and so I think what I just keep thinking is people are going to park there and walk down the street to their friends. And it'd be it even, and I don't know if that's allowed, you know, but I just, um, that might be inconvenient to some of the businesses up there if suddenly residents start parking up there as well. I'm very, very concerned about changing from senior to anybody without knowing exactly what those 22 residents feel about the whole thing and what the neighborhood feels about the whole thing. Right, we're not Let me tell you something about this project going way back. The neighborhood was not in favor of turning this, and this used to be a residential lot, turning it into a commercial lot and putting apartments in there. And I think maybe the neighborhood over the years has gotten a little bit complacent and say, okay, they got seniors in there, that's all right. Well, you start changing that, the neighbor's going to be up in arms again, and they have every right to be. Every right to be. Um, just to elaborate, I know we're not considering the fact that you're doing a conversion from senior, but what I think he's trying to touch upon is the inconvenience that comes with this conversion, along with it. Um, I don't think we're going to go through any questions or vote on any sort of issues here. We're just going to have a motion. Is that correct? Well, you could. Could we? Do you want to do this You could take each of the three. I, I, again, I have no, I have no experience. So with why this don't we break this down? <laughs> Should we maybe go down and have each board comment on the three different criteria here: the neighborhood values, the inconvenience to the public, and the increased congestion. So why I don't think we just over the years, Mr. Longstaff, I think we might have had one about six or seven years ago that we had to deal with. And we did go through the questions. Patrick. Yeah, so let's do that. So first we're going to talk about how we feel that it would either imp have an impact on the neighborhood values. Ms. Torn, I feel like you already have, but go ahead. Yeah, I think you already have too, but I, I, I don't believe that a reduction would be correct in the neighborhood values. I understand the rest of the board's opinions, um, but I, I feel like So we Good. can decide, please. Keeping our former chairs here. Um, so yeah, let's open this up to the public. <laughs> Does anyone have anything they would like to say? And Brian, did we have any letters or I, emails? I had one phone call, uh, which I, a voicemail, which I returned. Uh, one, of the, one of the neighbors was just wanting to know what this all meant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did leave him a message and explained what it all meant. That it basically read right of the, the summary sheet that you have in front. Mm -hmm. And I never got a call back or an email or, or anything more. And there was no other correspondence from any of the neighbors. Okay. And they're not here tonight. And they're not here tonight. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so either, either they, they understand and don't care, or they didn't read their mail, or <laughs> I, I have no idea what's going on. But uh, that's what I thought. Okay. So now, sorry, we'll go through. And Ms. Torrens was talking about the neighborhood values. I think you did. I think I pretty much you did. summed up. Thank yes. you. <laughs> so, Mr. Karen. I believe that there may be a negative impact, not necessarily on the entire neighborhood, but those living on that street on Griffin Road due to the. Uh, Um, as 
far as neighborhood value is concerned, as I said before, I think the neighborhood is under the impression it's a senior living area. And you change that to anybody and motorcycles and all that stuff, and it's definitely, uh, definitely affects the neighborhood value, no doubt about it. I don't think this has been addressed tonight. We've got a lot of information I've asked questions on that there were no answers for. I think those answers need to be present and provided. I did insurance in a former lifetime. One of the first questions on the application when you're putting an apartment house under a contract for insurance is, are you running it to any college students or anyone under the age of 25? Okay. There's a reason that's on there. Right. And again, we're not considering the conversion here from a senior to a multi-unit normal living, but I think we're just kind of coming around the neighborhood values and the connotation what comes from having people 55 plus with one parking spot into opening this up into, you have 36 apartments with 40 spa parking spaces open to anybody. Um, I do feel like, I think I've expressed this before, that the neighborhood values may be impacted negatively because you know when you get people of all different ages, you know they're just going to be, this is a pretty tight spot, they're gonna be outside more, they're making more noise possibly, parking on side of the streets and decreasing the value of the properties around them. Uh, can we have a vote on the neighborhood values, number one? Wait a minute. Sorry. Did you do inconvenience to the public or neighborhood values? I thought you were heading down the inconvenience to the public. We're doing the neighborhood values, okay. which is the first one. All right. <laughs> Sorry. May I have a chance? Yes, May I ask absolutely. Uh, following on Mr. Crockett's questions and concerns, would it be appropriate to have the decided to table so we can have a representative from the Animal Management Company here to answer any occupancy questions that you might have? My reaction is no. I do not feel that any of the information, I feel like I have enough information here enough to decide. I don't. I would love feedback from the board. I don't know if he has, you know, data on how many parking spaces he has at his other properties. If he has other properties with 1.1 parking spaces per unit, I, I feel like if that information was available, he would have provided it by now. Um, that's kind of my initial take. Um, What's the rest of the board think? What does the rest of the board think? <laughs> I think we have to respect the fact that they asked for it to be tabled okay. without yeah. proceeding further if that's, their, if that's their wishes that they want it to be tabled. And what sort of information you're saying you'd like to present? Well, I think one of the, one of the key questions for people like that is, are the current residents still wearing the appropriate okay. clothes to move forward? So certainly uh, that would be one of the items that we want to uh, address okay. as far as like, any discussions or concerns that the residents may have uh, regarding that. Certainly any further detailed information for schedules for site visits uh, and their conversion from uh, senior to multifamily is certainly something that we want to pro uh, provide information on as well. Yeah, I think for me, again, we're not planning. What, what concerns me a little bit is it doesn't seem like it was that long ago that they were like, we want to do senior housing. There's, there's a market. Let's do it. It's almost, to me, I'm trying to understand, like, you know, did, did you kind of slide in there with senior housing and say, oh, you know, we just really want to be a multi-unit. And that's what the planning part I don't know about. So that I think that might be helpful. Um, you know, I think Mr. Blaze has said that, you know, generally from his recollection, there wasn't a lot of happiness about this. And um, so um, if you, and again, I think, you know, if he does this in other properties and he has the data, you know, let's see it. You know, I, I, I can't imagine renting, he has other properties. I would love to see if he has restrictions on other properties with one units with their at full capacity and kind of what sort of issues may arise or not. Um, trying to think what other information we could get. I don't know if anyone has anything I, else. I, also, um, I, I would just like, I'd love to see, you know, rental rates, um, just because I think that that determines a lot about the population that would actually be going into a place like this. Um, Pass conversions from use. Pass conversions is what you said. Yes. yes. Yeah, and historical data on, you know, what happens when, when senior housing gets converted to Also, maybe uh, I think one of the concerns was monitoring and enforcement. Do they have right. any more ideas on how they would assuage the board's concerns about how that's going to be enforced and monitored? And what happens if you 
get somebody who's all nice and smiles and signs the lease and says, oh yes, one car, fine. And, and how is that going to be enforced if all of a sudden a car starts popping up in, in other places? What, what system do they have to, to deal with that? Obviously, the, the police would have a system to deal with that, but that doesn't help the neighbors if they're constantly having to call the police because somebody's parked near their driveway right. or whatever. Or five Harley Davidsons <laughs> rolling in at the same time. I just think that those are kind of pieces of information that I heard the board have a concern about mm -hmm. and uh, might be helpful. So I think it's always helpful. The more ammunition you can come back with to, to, to help your case, uh, we certainly don't want to waste your time or the board's time. So, yeah. Anybody else? Any suggestions for what? fully explored putting 14 spots anywhere else in anything that's not in <coughs> flood zone or type of thing. Um, I guess, you know, maybe more information as to why, you know, we can't, you know, I mean, do you want renters or do you want gardens? It's kind of like, you know, and I think it's kind of, I think that was, that's a little more information as to what the reason behind that is. Well, we don't even know if anybody's using the garden. It's going to be hard to ask if I ask the question. Well, it's kind of hard now to find out, but I mean, I think someone that's managing the property would have been able to show us if anybody was using it during the summer and stuff. I mean, if you've got a, nobody using that garden, why is it there? I mean, it's good to have an amenity, but if no one wants to use it, use it better. Perhaps they had photographs or something. We have a motion. Motion to table appeal number 3655. Motion second. All in favor? Thanks. Thanks. Next item. Okay. <laughs> what we've all been waiting for. I'm not coming back next month. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna get you to me. Don't, I don't we don't have it for you, right? We'll be in Boston right <laughs> there. activities uh, we had a total of uh, 37 um, appeals and out of the 37 and th this is a spread over all of the various appeals variances special exceptions reduction of yard size practical difficulty miscellaneous appeal we approved 30 of those we denied five of those and two were pending and tabled wow. that's that's a lot of work 37 appeals mm -hmm. yes so How again you? thank you that's yeah, probably five more denials than you had the prior year. <laughs> <laughs> Power five years. <laughs> <laughs> All 
So hopefully, um, and, and, and again, we still have a we still have a vacancy. So Mr. Blaze and or Mr. Crockett is welcome to continue to serve until we re okay. we replace that uh, He's got his plaque. other vacancy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn.